Welcome to DroneLaw.pro. Today we're going to be talking about the big news. Yesterday the FAA recommended a $1.9 million fine against commercial drone operator uh, Skypan International. This is the largest fine levied by the FAA against a commercial drone operator and so it's big news. This has been a long investigation for the FAA and uh, yesterday there was a public release of information concerning that investigation. So today what we're going to do is we're going to dig into this a little bit. We're going to find out what this fine means for Section 333 commercial operators and those who are operating illegally without a Section 333. We're going to talk a little bit about how the FAA is typically handling these enforcement issues and why this company uh, became a target for the FAA. And what you're going to see is that there were a number of factors that played heavily in favor of a recommended fine of $1.9 million. We should note that this is a recommendation at this point. Skypan International will have the opportunity to contest the facts, deny the facts, uh, tell the FAA that they're wrong. Uh, they can at that point uh, decide that they want to negotiate a fine of a lesser amount or simply refuse to pay the fine. At that juncture, the FAA will need to decide whether or not they're going to bring an enforcement proceeding against the company and try and enforce that fine. So here we go. Let's take a look at this and do a little bit of an anatomy of an FAA enforcement action against Skypan International. So let's break it all down for you. Uh, the FAA press release uh, is really interesting because it shows that the FAA wants to send a message here to the commercial drone operator community that they are serious about the drone regulations that they have passed. Uh, they are serious about the Section 333 process that's going to get us between now and the adoption of the drone regulations into law and that if you don't comply they will follow up with fines. We know we talk to people every day who've received cease and desist letters from the FAA because they were flying their drone commercially without an exemption. The big question has always been well what happens if you get a cease and desist letter and you continue to violate uh, the FAA section 333 process you don't get a civil COA or some other COA in order to be able to fly and there have been a lot of people who've said hey we don't think the FAA is serious about this we think that uh, there's no instance ever of the FAA fining anyone for flying a commercial drone without a section 333 exemption and of course that was true until the other day uh, when this press release was released. The, the reason why that was a very dangerous argument always and one we would push back on is because it takes a long time before information concerning these investigations to become public. So this is an investigation that's been going on since 2012. We're just learning about it in 2015. The FAA does not send cease and desist letters for no reason. If they resend a cease and desist letter and you violate that willfully, you will get fined by them. It's only a question of time. This is just one example of what can happen to you if you play fast and loose with the uh, with the rules. But here's what the FAA has had to say about this. They say that between uh, March of 2012 and December of 2014, Skypan International conducted 65 unauthorized operations in some of the most congested airspace that we have in the United States and in some of the most heavily populated cities. Essentially, most of the violations concern operations between 2012 and 2014 in New York, in downtown New York. Uh, there are any number of violations that will go through uh, that the FAA is uh, using in order to support their recommended fine. Uh, but when you've uh, when you've been found to have 65 unauthorized flights, you you should realize you've got a problem. We did contact Les Dorr, who is the spokesman for the FAA, about this press release and about this issue, and we asked him point blank whether or not part of the fine is a result of flying without a Section 333 exemption. And Mr. Dorr confirmed that, in fact, the company Skypan International now has an exemption, but at the time of these violations, it did not have an exemption. So it was flying commercially before it got an exemption. And Mr. Dorr further confirmed that the fine is based in part on flying 
commercially without a Section 330 exemption, as well as without the, the appropriate civil COAs, airworthiness certificates, etc. So this, uh, this concept that somehow you can fly without an exemption and, and get by with it is false. So what do we know about Skypan? Well, they appear to be a big-time commercial drone operation. They've been around for 27-plus years with experience in aerial photography and videography. Essentially, this is a company that has been doing aerial photography and videography by manned helicopter and manned flight for a long time. They In, in 2008 or so, it appears they integrated an unmanned helicopter of their own design and build into their fleet of, uh, of aerial vehicles. And they started flying that aerial helicopter to, to capture aerial videography and photography for customers. And they did it outside of the FAA regulations. So they boast a lot of experience. They've been around for a long time. And as you're going to see, there's a big history here between the FAA and the owners at Skypan International. Uh, one of the things that we'll talk about is that the FAA did a long investigation here, including subpoenas to both Skypan and its customers in order to get the information to support the fact that these flights occurred, that they were in unmanned vehicles, that they uh, were at certain altitudes, etc., and that they were commercial. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about the enforcement aspect and the investigation aspect of what an, the FAA will do when it receives notice of a violation. The, uh, the main thing that we also want to emphasize here is that a lot of uh, the uh, citations, the violations that are included in the FAA's letter involve flights that, that are clearly marketed on Skypan's website. So while a website video or a YouTube video will not in and of itself create enough evidence for a violation, it certainly can support a violation. And, and we're seeing here that Skypan's marketing was all over the web. They were really um, pushing heavily on the concept that they were flying this unmanned aerial helicopter uh, to get uh, amazing flights. And these are flights that cost tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, they were really pushing hard on, on the information they were putting online. And, of course, when you do that, you just put yourself further in the spotlight. So let's take a look at the, uh, the Skypan International uh, FAA Enforcement Division letter that was sent to the president of Skypan International on October 6, 2015. And so when the uh, Department of Transportation, the FAA, completes its investigation to the point where it believes that, in fact, there has been a violation, it has several enforcement options, one of which is to, to send what is called a civil penalty letter. And this civil penalty letter puts the company on notice that there's been a violation. And you can see here that uh, based on the facts and circumstances, FAA believes that Skypan is engaged in uh, the following flights, and then they list them out. March 21, 2012, one flight for a project at the 35 West 15th Street address. So the reason they have these addresses is because, uh, as we'll see, of subpoenas that they issued to the customers of Skypan uh, when Skypan uh, tried to avoid uh, subpoenas sent to them. So there's a lesson to be learned here, and that is that when you're outside the regulations, you put your customers at risk, and those customers could end up getting subpoenas and having to hire their own lawyers to uh, address the FAA inquiries. So what we have here are some of the substantive uh, notations in the letter. Skypan uh, operated uh, on those flights listed above without receiving an air traffic control clearance from the ATC facility. And so one of the things you have to do before you fly is you have to get clearance from the tower. They did not do that. They were in downtown New York in very high, highly congested uh, air traffic. And they were flying, as you'll see, at, at altitudes that were up into uh, potential air traffic as, as well as helicopter traffic. Number five, Skypan operated the aircraft and it was not equipped with a two-way radio. Now this is interesting because normally when you get your 333 exemption, the FAA exempts you from that requirement. Since they did not have their 333 exemption at this point, then the FAA's position is they were required to 
uh, comply with all the federal aviation regulations which applied, including those that would normally be exempted by the FAA for drone operations. And again, in 6, we see the same thing. No transponder with altitude reporting equipment. Uh, that's one that the FAA would exempt you from having to comply with if you went through their process. Note that the aircraft had not been registered with the FAA. It's re a requirement of all Section 333 owners to get an N number to register their aircraft with the FAA. So if something bad happens, they can trace that drone back to its owner. Uh, you can see here that they did not have an airworthiness certificate for their drone, for their uh, helicopter in this instance. And uh, that is another item that the FAA will give you an exemption from. Uh, showing an equivalent level of safety for a drone if you apply for a Section 333 exemption. And of course they did not get their COA, their Certificate of Waiver Authorization for each of the flights and uh, the FAA finds that they operated in a careless or reckless manner as a result. And then you're going to see all these CFRs here are individual violations. So the FAA uh, relies on 49 U.S.C. section 46301A5 for a maximum fine of $11,000 per each violation. And in this instance, they're recommending a fine of $1.9 million against Skypan. And it's signed by uh, the attorney for the enforcement Enforcement Division of the Northeast Team of the FAA. So this is the type of thing that you're going to be seeing if you operate outside the 333 and COA process. All right, so that'll do it for this uh, edition of Anatomy of an FAA Enforcement Action, taking a look at the Skypan $1.9 million uh, recommended fine and next time we'll take a look at the subpoenas that were issued previously and take a deeper look into the history of this case so we could better understand why the FAA went after Skypan and you'll be able to learn lessons about uh, how to govern your 333 operation as a result of this case study. Until next time we'll see you flying and we'll see you flying safe. Have a good one everybody.